In recent years, the Python programming language has gained broad adoption for control of scientific experiments and test and measurement instruments. Here at SRS, we have developed several Python instrument drivers to make instrument control and remote interaction easier. These drivers are available publicly via the Package Installer for Python, or PIP for short. Here, we are looking at the SR860 Python driver, which I will demo in this video. The source code is also available on GitHub if you want to dive a little deeper to understand what's in the package or make your own modifications. After we install the driver, I will show you how to establish a connection between your PC and an SR860. In a follow-up video, I will work through the Getting Started chapter of the SR860 operation manual in order to familiarize you with the Python driver syntax and make it easy to verify that the commands are working. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will assume you already have Python 3.7 or later installed. If not, head on over to python.org to download and install it now. I will install the driver into a so-called Python virtual environment, which is generally considered a best practice for avoiding dependency conflicts. Create a folder where you wish to create a new virtual environment. Go ahead and open a command terminal pointed to that folder, and we'll create the virtual environment. This command uses the Python module named vemv to create a virtual environment of the same name. When I execute that line, you see that a folder with that name is created in our working directory. Go ahead and activate the newly created virtual environment. You'll get this indication that the vemv is active right here. Next, we install the SR860 package into the virtual environment with pip install. If you don't want to install to a virtual environment, but instead want to install to your global Python environment, you would skip the venv creation and activation steps and simply use python-m pip install srs inst.sr860 to install at the global level. I'll keep the virtual environment active and proceed from here. I can use pip list to see the installed packages in the virtual environment. The SR860 driver makes use of NumPy, PySerial, VXI11, and SRS GUI. So these all come along for the ride with the install. VXI11 is used for Ethernet communications, and SRS GUI provides the underlying instrument and remote interface classes. Now we can launch into a Python prompt to start writing Python code and communicating with the instrument. First, we need to import the module into our active scope. And then we can create an SR860 object. In object-oriented programming languages like Python, this is called instantiating an object. I'll give it the name lockin and use the SR860 constructor, just a set of empty parentheses, to create an SR860 object. Here's the physical lock-in that I'll be communicating with during this demo. Once the object has been created, you establish the remote connection using the connect method. This requires the interface name and address passed as strings. For example, to connect using RS-232, I use the serial interface name, and then for the address, I can open Device Manager and see that COM7 is being used by the USB to serial adapter plugged into this PC. So I pass that as the address string here. Once a connection is established, it is useful to take a look around. For that, we need to know about the commands available to us. Our Python instrument drivers are designed to be self-documenting. That is, after you learn a bit of syntax, you can ask the lock-in directly what commands are available. The instrument class from which the SR860 inherits has a built-in DIR convenience attribute that lists the attributes of the instrument. So at the top level, the lock-in consists of components with a long list of components here, commands, just an empty list, and methods. You can see that this is just a Python dictionary where components, commands, and methods are the so-called dictionary keys. The components are organized in the same categories as can be found in the programming chapter of the 860 manual. Reference, signal, output, aux. You can see the same components here, 
reference, signal, output, aux, etc. The difference between commands and methods is a bit subtle. Commands behave essentially as variables, giving you the ability to query and set a parameter without needing any parentheses. We'll see this more in a bit when we start adjusting the instrument settings. Methods, meanwhile, are just Python methods, or functions, requiring a set of parentheses and possibly some parameters. We can see that there are no commands available at this top level, but we can look at the available methods. We just ask the dictionary from DIR what methods are there. We can see the connect method that we just used, along with check ID, reset, get status, and so on. Let's use check ID. You can see the remote activity LED light up on the front panel of your lock-in anytime characters are received via a remote interface. This is a good diagnostic that the connection has been established, as is the fact that we got a meaningful response back in our Python terminal. We can see the lock-in model number, serial number, and firmware version. We can use lock-in get status to obtain a snapshot of a few of the commonly adjusted instrument settings, like frequency, phase, and amplitude, as well as some information from the lock-in status bytes. If you happen to know some of the remote command mnemonics, you can send them directly using the query text method. This requires a parameter string, for example, star IDN, the standard remote query that identifies the instrument with its manufacturer, model number, serial number, and firmware version. Maybe RS-232 is not your preferred interface. The 860 has four available remote interfaces, RS-232, GPIB, USB, and Ethernet. So let's instead connect via Ethernet. You will need to know the IP address of the lock-in, viewable from the front panel. Hold the Calc System button, and then go to the Ethernet tab. Previously, we instantiated the SR860 object separately from creating the interface connection. However, we can wrap those into a single operation like this. Simply pass the interface name and address to the constructor itself. For Ethernet, the interface name is VXI11 and the address I just read from the front panel. To use USB or GPIB, we need to install PyVisa which doesn't get installed by default with the 860 driver. So I'll go ahead and leave the Python prompt to install PyVisa with pip. I use control Z and enter to exit the Python prompt. Then I'll go ahead and pip install PyVisa. You can verify that it's been added to the list of installed modules using pip list. We can see it right here. And once that's installed, we can go back to the Python prompt. Of course, we have to start over. First, we have to import the SR860, and then we import PyVisa. We can view the available Visa resources as follows. I can see both USB and GPIB instruments available. So we can connect as before by passing the interface name and address to the constructor. Now the interface name is Visa and let's use the USB address. We can use lock in check ID to make sure that worked. And similarly for GPIB. Now you are successfully connected, and you can begin to use the Python driver to adjust the instrument settings and query measured values. In the next video, we will follow the user manual's getting started guide to get some practice using the Python driver command set. See you next time. Thanks for watching.